We are here at Embedded World 2024 and we're looking at something quite exciting. Uh, we've talked about Rust on microcontrollers many, many times and there's a reason why people love using Rust because it is memory safe and has a number of other great advantages too. But it's not something that's been production ready for a number of reasons. One of which is that there is legacy code that has been used for a very long time that is certified. Now, I am standing here with Stefan von Vico who have come up with something really quite exciting. A certified bridge between your Rust code and legacy drivers that drive things like, well, cars for example. Stefan. What exactly are you guys doing? Yeah, absolutely. So car makers struggle with integrating new languages like Rust, even though they are aware of all the upsides, because they have hundreds of millions of lines of legacy code, usually written in C, C++, or model-driven development like MATLAB Simulink, you know, you connect boxes and arrows. <laughs> um, and they want to keep using that. They're, they're, there's no point in you know, redeveloping an airbag module or anything. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done here is to show that it's possible on an automotive grade controller with all the certification to isolate the sort of old school C mm -hmm. um, and then put it uh, next to Rust in a different compartment and there's a proof that there's freedom from interference. Mm -hmm. And so you can develop your new world on the one side, have message passing to the old world, for example, reuse Ethernet drivers mm -hmm. and all these kind of things. Yeah. Um, and this way, keep growing at your own pace mm -hmm. the Rust ecosystem and then add more functions as you go. Absolutely. And, um, and th this is kind of huge because, again, memory safety in Rust is only as good as the very bottom line of the hardware that you are using. And having a safe and certified bridge between the two of them uh, is, is a big thing in and of itself. But you also mentioned something before we started filming that I found really interesting too. Because of the way you've done this, there are uh, things that you can put in place to allow the Rust developer side to kind of do what they want without being able to do something stupid, like for example, make a car go in reverse when it's already going forward and things like that. Uh, could you give me a, a kind of a high level view as to how that is possible? Yeah, absolutely. So what Rust can do more than C mm. is for example, C will compile happily as long as you're syntactically writing correct code, but yeah. it can be stupid code. Absolutely, um, yeah, I know that one. And, yeah. <laughs> and we've, we've all been there. Yeah. Um, and what you can do, one of the, the, the language features of Rust mm. is called the type state API. Mm. That means in the, in the type itself of, of, of modeling something, so uh -huh. I think the analogy in C++ would be like a, a, an object, yeah? Yeah. but in Rust, you know, it's traits and that's not got bogged down into the detail. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can uh, model what you're actually doing, like your, your example with a car going in reverse, mm -hmm. it would be stupid to put it in uh, drive yeah. to, go, to go forward. And if you model that correctly in your object, mm -hmm. your, your type state API, mm -hmm. then it prevents the engineer from doing something stupid, like yeah. writing code that doesn't make any sense or that would go, I don't know, in both directions at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And it, and it is a really exciting time for that because Rust on Embedded isn't necessarily new. Actually, very early in the development of the Rust programming language, they were targeting things like STM32s, but it's always been very much a kind of hobby thing that people wanted to do. But Rust is really starting to come of age and seeing it used in certified places is really quite exciting. So, Stevan, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.